Welcome to Intech, my name is Luke and today it's part 4 of our Azure Data Engineering project. Now in episode 1 we covered the business request and our solution and from that solution we then have this architectural diagram and so through episode 1 we covered the setting up of a SQL database, installing Power BI and then setting up all of the other services. In episode 2 we covered data ingestion using Data Factory from the on-prem SQL database that we set up to the data lake. Episode 3, we then used Databricks for transformation from a bronze to silver to gold containers. And now, part 4, we're going to load it using Synapse Analytics. So that's our extract, transform, load. And the next episode, we'll cover Power BI for a little dashboard and Active Directory, just a little bit on that. So without further ado, let's load the data with Synapse and Azure Portal. So once we're in Azure Portal, let's go to our resource group. And within here, we'll see our Synapse workspace. So if we go into the Synapse workspace, you can see under Getting Started, there's an Open Synapse Studio. So if we click Open here, it will then load up Azure Synapse Analytics Studio. And within here, you'll see that it is quite a like Data Factory. It's as if it's built on top of Data Factory with a couple of extra features. Now on the left, you see this panel. If we click Expand, you can see Home, Data, Develop, Integrate, Monitor, Manage. So if we go to Data, you can see here that you can create databases, so SQL, like, for example. So you can load the data. In Develop, you can see you can create SQL scripts, notebooks, and Integrate, so you can create pipelines, linked connections, and Monitor, you can monitor various pools, and various pipelines and within manage you can manage these pools, manage security, triggers, linked services etc. So you can see here that everything we've done so far you could probably do in Synapse Analytics. So within data you want to click plus and you want to make a SQL database. Now here you can see it says select SQL pool type. This is just a pooling of resources. You can either do a serverless so let Azure manage it relative to your workload or you can click dedicated in which you make your own managed pool. The difference here is obviously dedicated is probably going to be more expensive but its use case is if you have a lot of data it's probably better to use dedicated. Serverless is only compute, dedicated is compute and storage. But for us we'll just go with serverless and then we'll call it gold db and click create. I've just done it a minute ago that's why that error is coming up. And so once it's done you see the workspace here under SQL database, there's the gold DB. Now if we go to linked, we can see that Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 is already linked to this Synapse Analytics. And if we open it up by clicking here, you can see that you can browse it as if you're in the storage account. Now there's bronze, silver, gold, and then the Synapse file system. So if we go to gold and open that up, you can see that you can browse this as if you were just browsing it in storage account. What we can do here is on these individual tables we can right click new SQL script and we can run SQL queries in here. So here we just say that it is a delta format file, click apply and then it creates the script for us. So if we run that and then we can see that this pulls back the top 100 rows from that there. So you can see how powerful it is to load the data in this format. We can see here that it's also quite similar to Databricks in that you can connect to, to different computes and then you can change which database you're using. So if you had multiple here, you could just select whichever one it is you want to run the query against and it will run it against that one. So if we wanted to run the same query against, say, Bronze, you'd have to go in here, create a SQL database of the Bronze and then just run the query. So let's take this as an example and we'll update it to create a view. And so if we update this part at the top to say create view as, what this will do now is within this GoDB it will create this view. So if we click run, now once this is run successfully you'll see that there's no results to show. That's because there's no output, it just creates a view. You can imagine a view like a template of this here. So whenever you select all from this, it will actually show kind of the results of this query. So under workspace you can see SQL DB, GoDB. If we refresh this GoDB, then check under views, 
we'll see this now exists here, this view. And to run this view, we can do something like this here, select all from that view, and if we run that, you see that it automatically runs that query. Now, to create a view for each of these, we can create a pipeline to do it dynamically. This time, we'll do it in Synapse to show you that we can do it in here, as opposed to going to Data Factory. So if we open up Develop, we'll click Plus, and we'll click on Import. And now I'm going to import in here this query, which dynamically does it. I would suggest that you write it out, as I've said in other tutorials, because getting that muscle memory, and also, when you're writing out, you make a lot of errors, and, and then you can, uh, you'll spend more time going over it. So you're using the GoDB, you're creating or altering this procedure, and it has this view name as a parameter, and this is the type, and then within here, it just dynamically runs that same select from blah, 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 view name, the same as we had just shown here. So now if we close down this script, and then we click Publish All, it will publish this script here, so we'll save it. And the next step is to create a pipeline that uses this procedure. So first of all, let's create a linked service to connect this serverless SQL DB. So if we go to Manage and Linked Services, and then we'll click on Plus, and we will type in here Azure SQL, and it will come up Azure SQL Database, click on that, we'll click Continue. Up here we'll rename it to underscore gold. Auto resolve integration runtime because we're using another service within Azure. Account selection method. So let's go to enter manually to show you how to do this. So for the fully qualified domain name in Synapse resources, let's go back to Synapse here. We'll go to settings properties and scroll down until you see serverless SQL endpoint and if we click copy here then we'll go back paste that in and then for the database name we're using the gold DB database authentication type we'll change this to system assigned managed identity which essentially uses your email address authentication to connect to the DB if we then do test connection, you can see if everything's set up right. Connection successful, perfect. Let's click create and publish all to save that connection. So now we can use this link service to access the stored procedure from the pipeline. So let's go to integrate. There we go, published, perfect. We'll go to plus and we're going to create a new pipeline. Now in here, let's search for metadata. This will get the table names. So here, let's change it to get table names. We'll go to settings, because something is done here, which is to add a data set. Now there will be no data set, so let's create a new one. In here, let's search for data lake. We'll click on that, continue. Now this time, we want it to be a binary. So click continue on that, binary one is fine. Linked service, we'll use our new linked service. And then for file path, let's browse. You can see here we can click on gold, and then sales LT. And we'll click OK, because that's the tables we want. Click OK again. So now you'll see that fuel list pops up under settings. So if you click New, you can see here there's child items. This gets all the child items under the Sales LT folder, which is the one we had just opened in here. Now to see the output, let's just click on Debug, and it will run this here and give us the output. As we've seen before, this arrow is the input, and then when it's done, the next one will be the output. Just there we go, if we click on output, you can see here that the child items are the name and the type. So now we have all of the names of all of the tables that we can use. So now let's create a for each activity. So if we come to here, just type in for each, 
can do that. And then on success, we want this for each to run. And within settings, go to items, we'll add dynamic content. So we want to get content dynamically from this tables item. And so from here, we want get table names child items. And we'll click OK, because as we had seen from the output of that one, if we go back, just click anywhere other than an activity and it'll go to this here. We can check the output again. You can see it's called child items. And so that's why in the for each, we want to get that activity, get its output and get child items, which is that big chunk of the output. So now we want to create a new activity within the for each. So we'll click the pencil icon and this time we'll search for stalled procedure. Because if you recall from last time, in this here, this is a procedure. So you're trying to access the procedures. Now, within settings, linked service, same as last time, SQL, and stored procedure names, you'll see there are none. So I want to click new stored procedure, and as the name, you want it to be view name. Why? Again, because it's coming from here. This is the parameter we want to send in. So that's the stored procedure parameter. The type we're going to have as string. Let's scroll this up so we can see. String. And as the value, we want at item dot name. So let's click that dot name. So if you recall from the JSON, it's the dot name value that we want. Now we'll do publish all to save all these changes. Oh, stored name procedure. We haven't added in the stored name, stored procedure name. We just have the parameters. So to connect that, what we have to do is we have to create the stored procedure. So we've come back to this query here and use it on the gold DB. We can run it. That will then create that stored procedure. If we go back to view name and refresh, once it refreshes, we can see that it's popped up now. So that's that dynamic procedure. And then we can pass in this here. So let's publish all to save everything. Publish. And we'll go to the pipeline on metadata and we will add the trigger now that it's published successfully we'll trigger it now click ok and then we can see this runs so let's go and watch it from monitor all right so we have a failed what's failed let's see if I click this here that will show you the error message content of directory on path blah 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 cannot be listed what is this supposed to mean then so I've just realized that it's this here. Storage account is called Intech SG. And then if we run this, that should be fine. Now let's rerun it by going to monitor, pipeline, click on here. We'll click rerun entire data pipeline or field activity we will run from field activity so that should just run the for each because this get table names will be correct still now if we go to pipeline runs refresh succeeded so let's click on it here successfully run blah 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 you can see if we click these as you can now see, it successfully run all of these stored procedures. So if we go to data, we can go to the SQL database, we'll refresh. And now under views, we see all of the views here. Perfect. So something to note here is that this doesn't have to be run every time because it only has to be run if there are any schema changes, not data since it's a view, which is essentially like a layer above. So it's kind of like, how do you see the data? And the only time that would have to change is if how you view the data changes, i.e. if the schema changes. So that's us now seen all the way up to Synapse. Let's now have a look on our next episode, how we can see this data in Power BI using these views that have been created, as well as then who can access all the stuff we've made use an active directory. So if you have any comments, queries, questions, as always, leave them in the comments below. I'll go back to them as soon as I can. Make sure to subscribe. The next episode about tomorrow. Take care and I'll see you later.